BookTok and Bookstagram can ruin the joy of reading. Rainbow shells are awful. I know this is one of my very unpopular opinions. Hello, my name is Leonie. Welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, hey. I've had my fair share of hot takes and unpopular opinions on this channel. You guys know that I'll always be honest about my opinions. So I thought it would be super fun to kind of have a little discussion video, a little debate video where I respond to your guys's bookish hot takes and unpopular opinions. This is by no means an original idea of me. This is a trend that's been like going around for years. Okay, cool. Mm. Let's go. <laughs> so I asked you guys on my Instagram for your hot takes and you had hot ones. Like it was very clear that there were some things just brewing under your guys' skin and you were happy to let it all out. Oh, immediately, super hot take. Female authors like Sarah J Maas, Colleen Hoover, etc. are bashed more on social media than similar problematic male authors. I think this is a very interesting take because I think there are very good reasons for why people tend to criticize, like especially Colleen Hoover and certain problematic things that appear in authors' books. But the the hate is very strong. The hate is like extremely strong. I don't think it balances out the absolute love, like however much hate there is for Sergio Maas and especially Colleen Hoover. There's even more hype around them. I think they are mostly so vehemently hated because they're also so incredibly loved. Are there similarly problematic male authors? 100% do we see vehement hate for them the way we see people hate on Colleen Hoover? Absolutely not. And I do think that that is something that we might maybe think about. But I don't think it's a reason to not criticize authors like Colleen Hoover. Fanfic is generally much better written romance than any romance novels out there. <laughs> I'm not someone who's read a lot of fan fiction, just like a little bit, so I'm not like super well versed in the world of fan fiction. I think what's happening is that when you read a fan fiction, you're already familiar with the character, so the fan fiction writer doesn't have to like lead you through the process of getting to know the characters. You already love them. And I think it's easier to create like really good romantic scenes in that way. And on top of that, when it comes to fan fiction, you are searching like exactly for the thing that you like right? You use the tags to search for exactly what you're looking for. And that, I think, makes it easier for you to just find things that you love. Ebooks are easier to read and more convenient than traditional books. I actually 100% fully agree with this one. It's true, guys. I recently started reading ebooks on my iPad and it's so convenient reading hands-free, reading in bed is a lot easier. It's just, you don't have to like physically hold the book open. You can just put it down and just eat while reading. It's so, it's genuinely, <laughs> like I'm not a super big like ebook person, but I will 100% stand behind the ebook people and say like, yes, they are way more convenient to read. <laughs> oh, right, so, <clears throat> So there was generally some debate about whether uh, breaking book spines is a good thing or not. Because some people are like, I hate people who, hate, who break book spines. And other people are like, you should just break the spine, who cares? I think I err on the side of you should just break the spine, who cares? If, you know, I'm borrowing a book from a friend and they're like, please don't break the spine. Obviously be respectful of that. And there's no reason to like hate people for wanting to keep them pretty. But personally, as someone who used to be a don't break the spine kind of person, Life is so much more free when you let that go. I just break spines sometimes, not on purpose. I don't actively break the spine. I know some people do that, where they just like open the book. Should I do it right now? No. Oh, that did feel a little bit wrong. Well, now it's a broken spine. So I don't actively try to break them, but I also don't mind if there's a crack. It just makes the book look red and I think that's fine. Books can be overrated. People should just accept that people like books that they don't. I guess that kind of makes sense when you say like, oh, this book is overrated or overhyped. You just mean like, oh, it doesn't deserve all this love that it's getting. 
you're kind of positioning yourself as some kind of like objective truth sayer about if a book is good or not. There were a lot about annotating. I think annotating takes you out of the story. I'd much rather let myself get lost in the story. I like to annotate my books sometimes. I tend to only do it with books where I feel like there's a little bit to analyze or for example classics. I like underlining lines that I like and writing like really quick short little messages in the margins like ooh or whoa or oh my god didn't expect that <laughs> because if I go into it more it does indeed take me out of the story it does someone else said I feel like annotating has become over the top and wasteful and only because it's a trend not out of pure joy now I don't agree I've seen some people online just like hating on those usually girls that really annotate a lot and highlight almost every page and like really turn the book into like a little bit of a piece of annotated art uh, and I've seen people hate on that as like oh you're not actually reading you're just doing it to show it on Instagram and I disagree with just assuming that women can actually be doing something out of actual joy I think a lot of people who annotate like that just really enjoy annotating like that but I can see where this person is coming from on the flip side. If you see this all over Instagram, if you see it all over the internet, I think the fact that it's a trend can maybe lead people to think like, oh, I need to also do that. And then they start doing it because it's a trend, even if they don't actually enjoy doing it. Like for example, I also thought like, oh, maybe I should start like annotating a lot and it'll make it look pretty. And I tried it and I was like, no. <laughs> because it does take me out of the story so I stopped um, but I'm sure there are a lot of people who do it genuinely out of the joy of their heart and I think it's stupid to assume that every person who does that is just doing it for like the Instagram likes. Going book shopping was way more fun when I didn't know what was popular on the internet. Yeah I agree with this one. Yes, knowing about which books are popular has allowed me to pick up like books that I really ended up loving because it helps you find out books that are perfect for you. But I do really sometimes miss that feeling that I had when I was like 16, walking into a bookstore and just not knowing anything and just looking for something that speaks to you instead of going into the bookstore and basically having this like mental grocery shopping list where you just go through the shelves and just like recognize like oh that book oh that book oh I'm looking for this book and this book and this book that I heard about online it turns it into more of like a task and not so much like an exploration so I do miss that but I will say maybe the reason that I miss this feeling of being 16 and walking into a bookstore is just because I'm no longer 16 and no experience is gonna be the same as it was when you were 16 because you just don't have that brain anymore. A lot of people had opinions about tropes. I don't know if this is a hot take but recommending books based off tropes alone is useless. I actually kind of agree a little bit, a little bit, it depends. There are certain book genres that you really read because of the tropes. Like I don't know about you but I personally read romance books very specifically because I'm just looking for a certain type of romance and I really go for certain tropes. But a lot of other books, like the tropes really don't tell you that much about what the book is actually about. Like sometimes I see book recommendations and they just give tropes and I'm like, okay, but now I don't actually know what the book is about. So I still can't really decide if this sounds like my thing or not. So I think recommending books based on tropes can be a little bit reductive where you're reducing the book to just the commercialized tropes that it contains. I do often include tropes when I'm recommending books because it's nice as like a little add-on, as a little like extra thing that I think can push someone over the edge on whether they want to read the book or not. But recommending solely based on tropes, I feel like it's not enough information. Taking your time to read a few books a month is better than reading hundreds. I, for me personally, this is 100% true. Really soak them in, just take my time with them, let the story marinate in my brain a little bit. I know if I try to read faster, it's gonna be to the detriment of my enjoyment of the book. I know some people just genuinely just read so much that they read a ton 
every year and that works for them but i hope no one ever feels pressured to read that much because then i think it's gonna take away from your enjoyment of the book friends to lovers over enemies to lovers that's a bad take sorry you had a bad take. I disagree. I'm an enemies to lovers girly. You guys know that. People can still call themselves a reader even if they exclusively listen to audiobooks. Yes, I fully agree with this. I will give you my reason, okay? I will give you my arguments. When people talk about being a reader or having read the book, most of the time we're referring to the fact that you can bond with other people over the fact that you read. You can talk to others about the characters or the plot of the book that you read. We're not referring to like the fact that you physically read the words on the paper. So when people say, I read the book, they're not referring to the literal act of reading, they're referring to the fact that they have consumed the story. So yes, I think people who exclusively listen to audiobooks can call themselves readers. Because when I say, oh, I love reading, I'm not referring to the fact that I love taking my eyeballs over the page and reading the words, I mean I love stories. I love consuming stories that are in books. And if you listen to the audiobook, you still consume that story. Book talk is not a good way to find recommendations for books. I disagree. I think I've talked about this before. I think people who talk about the fact that book talk gives bad book recommendations are just like new into book talk. Like I get great book recommendations from book talk because the algorithm has just found out everything about me. And then you get really great personalized book recommendations. Book talk and bookstagram can ruin the joy of reading. Ooh, -hoo -hoo. I think they can. I think they can. At first, having a little community online of people who love reading can enhance the joy of reading. It definitely does for me because you get to talk to other people about the books that you've read. You get to see other people who like the same things as you. If you get into it a little bit too much, I've noticed this myself, if you get into it a little bit too much, it can become a little bit overwhelming to just see this constant stream of new books that are coming out, new books that people are recommending that you can never keep up with because we can't, well, some of us can't, but most of us just can't read so many books all the time. And then you really start thinking of like, oh, I have to finish this book. And then while you're reading one book, you're already thinking about like the five other books that you wanna read after that. And that can, in a way kind of ruin the experience of reading. I don't think that's book talks or bookstagram's fault. It's just kind of what happens when you consume like a lot of the same recommendation content. I know that I probably inadvertently also contribute to this as someone who talks about books and gives book recommendations. I am adding to this constant stream of book recommendations and I'm not really sure how to not do that because of course I never want to make people feel overwhelmed with the amount of books that they can still read. Um, so yeah, this is actually very interesting, an interesting question. Don't consume too much is just generally a good, a good thing to do. Great advice. I'm very good with words. The Cruel Prince is one of the worst pieces of literature ever written in terms of plot and writing. Okay, and then I got a lot of hot takes in kind of a similar vein of people being like, I hate this book because I hate the character. I hate the Sally Rooney book because there's no communication. I hate this book because the main character is really annoying. Usually it's about contemporary literary fiction, like My Year of Rest and Relaxation, Bunny, and lots and lots of people about Sally Rooney. Mm, maybe this is my hot take. I don't think you need to like a character or think a character is completely likable in order to like the book. And the other way around, if you see someone really like, for example, a Sally Rooney book, that doesn't mean that we think these characters are like flawless, amazing people. And I think a lot of books, especially like contemporary literary books, the characters are not supposed to be these paragons of morality. You know, they are flawed. They are unlikable. They do stupid things. And that's what the book is about. Possessive behavior in romance books isn't romantic. 100% agree with this one. I know some people just really like it and I know that people are capable of understanding that the things that they like in romance books 
doesn't have to be the same as what they want in real life but i really don't it's not romantic that's definitely not it i no i don't think we need to add specific trigger warnings maybe a be careful if but no spoilers i don't believe in the idea that trigger warnings are spoilers i think trigger warnings or content warnings are actually a really good thing I, I really like to see it when i see it like being included at the beginning of the book so you know what you're getting into and if your content warning for the triggering content of your book is a spoiler that means that the author is using this heavy content as like a shocking plot point because why would it otherwise be considered a spoiler? And in that case, I'm already like, mm, why are you using these things just to shock the reader? Generally speaking, every content warning I've seen, it's not a spoiler. Like it doesn't ruin the story for you if you know what kind of heavy topics you're gonna get into. Complex doesn't equal good. Something can be complex and still a bad story. Yes, and I'm saying this as someone who does enjoy a complex story now and then. I like analyzing a little slightly com complex. Cheese. Apparently the English language is too complex for me. I like complex stories, but it can be very clear when an author thinks that making the story complex is enough to make the story good. Because no, if you're gonna write a very complex story, you need to undertake the very difficult task of guiding your readers through that complexity and making them understand it. If a book is like completely not understandable, that doesn't make it deep. It just means that you're a bad author. <laughs> and you can also write really good and deep stories about very simple things. So yeah, I love complexity, but it doesn't always mean that it's immediately good. I sometimes don't care if a book is poorly written as long as it's entertaining. I think we all do. Maybe I'm projecting. Yes, yes, sometimes you're just like, I don't care. I just want to enjoy this story. Oh my gosh, the book that I'm currently reading, I'm working on a video for you guys. I am reading The Foxhole Court. And I feel like those books are like the epitome of kind of poorly written, but if you just turn that part of your brain off, you're in for a good time. Rainbow shells are awful. I'm gonna, here's the thing, okay? I, I'm so sorry. I know a lot of people hate rainbow shells. I don't understand why. I don't understand the hate for rainbow shells. The only argument that I can understand is people not wanting to make rainbow shells because they're like, well, then I have to separate series and I don't like that or I'm not gonna be able to find the books that I'm looking for. I understand why you would not want it for your own shelves because it's inconvenient for yourself. But why people get so angry and upset at seeing someone else have rainbow shelves? I will never understand. I think it looks nice. I've had rainbow shells myself a few times in the past, not currently. It's fun. I genuinely have never ever seen someone give me a good argument for why they get upset over seeing someone else have rainbow shells. Reading the last page in the book and spoiling the plot doesn't ruin the fun. Now I've definitely had books kind of ruined for me because like big plot twists have been spoiled. But as someone who is uh, not very careful on the internet and gets herself books spoiled all the time, in most cases doesn't actually ruin the book that much. Yes, it ruins the fun of being shocked by the reveal, but a good book, a really good story doesn't solely rely on that shock factor. And I think this is also, I know this is one of my very unpopular opinions. I don't think spoilers are as bad as some people make it out to be. Like, yes, I understand if you're spoiling like major plot points, but just like small bits of the story, if you get them spoiled, it's really not gonna, at least it would not ruin the experience for me. <laughs> okay, I just found this one really funny. <laughs> yeah, who? <laughs> I've never read a book like that. 
Personally, I like a little bit of smut in my romance books, especially. I feel like it's kind of like the icing on the cake that makes a romance book really, really fun. But it shouldn't be too much because then, in my opinion, it just gets boring. There's an almost pressure to read popular books on BookTok and Instagram. I think so. I think here there's a clear distinction between whether you're just a consumer of that content or if you yourself also have a book talk or a bookstagram or a booktube. Uh, I think if you are a content creator, there's definitely pressure to read popular books because popular books just get more views and engagement from people. And if you're just a consumer of this social media side, I think there can definitely be pressure to read popular books because that's what everyone's talking about. So you want to join the conversation. It's kind of similar as what I mentioned before, like in its essence, there's nothing wrong with it. It's actually really cool that you can get together with so many people talking about the same books. But if you take it a little bit too far and you consume a little bit too much of it, then it starts feeling like pressure. But that's that's like no, that's not the fault of BookTok or Bookstagram or BookTube. It's just unfortunately kind of what happens um, when you consume a lot of content about the same thing. Oh, and this one, oh my God. When I read this, I was like, yes, I'm so glad I'm not the only one. All reading positions are uncomfortable. This is the truth. This is the truth about life. I've never found a comfortable reading position. I have to switch around my position like every 10 minutes because I'm just uncomfy. There's nothing, there's just nothing. I mean, you all, guys already know how much I'm always like shifting around in my videos. And when I'm reading, there's really nothing that doesn't start getting a little uncomfortable after a little bit. Hardbacks are better than paperbacks. I am a paperback person. I think hardbacks, no, I don't actually, there used to be like this idea of like, oh, hardbacks are prettier than, than paperbacks, but I even think paperbacks are prettier and they're easier to read. They're more comfortable. They're not as heavy. They don't have like annoying dust jackets. I'm a fan of paperbacks on literally every account. Oh, someone says that there's no good writing and bad writing. <sighs> I feel like there's so much that you can say about this that I cannot cover in like a little tidbit in this video. I do believe that it is subjective what you like in writing and what you don't like in writing, but there's a line somewhere. I don't know where it is. At some point, I think maybe ba objectively bad writing is when your writing is just ineffective at achieving the goal that you're trying to achieve. Like if the writing is just not conveying the story in a comprehensible way, if the writing is just not conveying the vibe that the author is trying to give off, then I think something's wrong there. And I think that there is like maybe more beautiful writing, but then uh, that's also very subjective. I think there is such a thing as good writing and bad writing, but there's more subjectivity to it than a lot of people make it out to be. Kill people plus hot isn't Morley Gray. Yes, you are correct. <laughs> I love Morley Gray characters. I feel like Morley Gray characters has kind of become synonymous with just like a hot dude. <laughs> that is an assassin. It's just like, they kill people. Mm -mm. I've said this before and I'll say it again, like killing people is like the one weirdly acceptable sin in a lot of books where to create like a morally gray character, you just make them an assassin. And then in every other aspect, they're just like morally good people. And then they're also hot. I mean, I like these characters, they're cool, but they're not like interesting morally gray characters or the other way around sometimes i see people being like oh this character's so morally gray and they're just straight up evil <laughs> and i'm like that's not gray they're just actually evil which is also fine but i'm talking about the moral gray it's like this interesting in between okay that's what i want obviously i'm just responding to these hot takes in like less than a minute each so we're losing out on a lot of nuance um, but i still hope you really enjoyed this video i want to give a very big thank you to all of my patrons who support the channel with a very special shout out to all of the elite Halen library members and our two newest elite members kylia hauser and lisetta harris welcome this month we are reading The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see you soon in another video very soon. Goodbye.